Hey everybody, welcome back to 80 Days, I'm Super Paul Games. We're in the middle of the Pacific, it's day 52, we got blown off course. Where the hell are we going? We're gonna take care of Mr. Fog. Oh, this is slow going. The captain announced a change of destination. No! No! We paid for four, over four grand to go to San Francisco, not to go to Honolulu! We would make for nearby Hawaii rather than San Francisco. We would make port in Honolulu for five days! And we'd have to find our own further conveyance from there? Oh no. Fuck you, Captain! I paid you a lot of money to take us to San Francisco! Monsieur Fogg's lips pressed ever so slightly together. This, my master said, will not do. Indeed not, sir, I agreed. Not even daring to calculate the delay and expense our unexpected diversion would cause. Monsieur Fogg gave me a cool, praising glass. Captain Wicker has reneged upon his word as a gentleman, he said curtly before lowering his voice to an almost furtive undertone. Our course is clear. We must mutiny. I opened my mouth to agree wholeheartedly, but he continued on without so much pause. See to him, past parte, use your natural charm. I interjected brightly. I don't know if I should have said mutiny. Quaint, he said, with the agreeableness of a gentleman who has just given his valet a near Herculean task. We will mutiny in five days when we reach Honolulu. Make your preparations as you see fit. What? If we're going to stop in Honolulu anyway? Oh, shit. Uh, hi, Commander Davis. My share of passport, yes. Uh, pre uh, tell me about Honolulu. I've heard it's in a beautiful paradise. God damn it. Uh, is it going to San Pedro? Let's just say you can obtain cotton flowers in San Pedro. You can sell in San Francisco. Oh my god. None of that helps me. We needed to get to San Francisco. Our whole plan was to go to San Francisco. Tell me about San Pedro. The quickest way to San Pedro from here is through Acapulco. Ugh. Uh, tell me more about San Pedro. Well, you can obtain revolvers in San Pedro. They're extremely valuable in New Orleans. I think our entire... I think we're in trouble here. We're going to ask about Houston, Las Vegas. Goodbye. My task was clear. I was to foment mutiny aboard the water lily. I decided to begin by exploiting the crew's animosity towards one another. Divide and conquer so the dear Manaman... Or so dear Mama and always consoled. Should I start with gossip and rumor or religious passions? Let's use gossip and rumor. I thought, though such subtleties might also be lost on a crew of sailors. So I decided to... Uh, steal the captain's wall-mounted crucifix and blame the theft upon the sh Shinto crew members. The captain took the theft as a personal affront in order to humiliate and search of the crew's quarters. The officers destroyed the Shinto shrine in the search, and several of the crew were dragged off to the brig for fighting. Ooh, maybe this will work. I mean, Monsieur Fogg liked that for some reason. Thank you, your care is most relaxing as we continue to comb his mustache. It was with satisfaction that I noted a certain increase in tension aboard the Water Lily, a situation I would carefully have exasperated if my master's mutiny was to have any chance of success. Next, I attempted to ingratiate myself with Commander Davis and the Submariners, maybe? Who are rather storm-tossed and disgruntled. There are no storms underwater, the captain muttered, her hair a tangle underneath her cap. Yeah, we should have submerged, I agreed. Captain Wicker risked all of our lives. Think, perhaps, he does not trust your ability as Submariners. The commander's face darkened at my asser assertion. At my ass? <laughs> what? Perhaps you're right, she said. Perhaps that is so. I'm going to push it. I've heard him say as much, I added, hoping to press my advantage. The commander's eyes narrowed suspiciously. Is that so? Why would he say such a thing to you? Um, I'm going to nod and wink. You do not know everything about me, I replied. The commander stared back unflinchingly, keeping her thoughts to, her thoughts to myself? Herself, I took my leave for a moment later, hoping my seeds of doubt would spread. I don't know if I played that one right. I should have just walked away after dropping the thing. Fog now in debt, says Banksource. All because the walking city 
No, because the ship we stayed on took us past where we wanted to go. I'd attempted to suborn the obvious targets aboard the Water Lily, but wars were often won with the unexpected. With that in mind, I turned my attention upon... How about the ship's artificer? A tall, rather imposing woman in a short jacket embroidered the guild's copper lily. Artificers were notoriously neutral in matters of conflict of civil... Uh, in matters of conflict or civil disruption, but I... I'm going to appeal to her vanity. Offering to restyle her rather fusty robes into something more all courte courant, courteur. She regarded my own outfit critically, critically for a few moments before her na face narrowly blossomed into a surprisingly sweet, if toothy, smile. You seem like a good man with a good eye, she admitted. I've always wanted to be fashionable. Um... I'm going to promise her that she would be the toast of any top deck she cared to walk upon, and I hope that her gratitude would translate to more direct aid in my revolutionary plans. I don't know what we have to lose at this point. I spent the day putting the last finishing touches to my planned mutiny. It was a matter as delicate and serious as the creation of a souffle by a master chef. I spread word of my signal amongst my allies, and... I am going to... Do I go to bed early or stay up late? I'm going to go to bed early. One could not mutiny on a bad night's sleep, after all. God, this could go so bad. We need to go to San Francisco. Greetings, mademoiselle. Pass the party, hi. Um, I heard Honolulu is beautiful. I heard that there are as many Americans as Hawaiians there. Uh, great. Can you go from Honolulu to San Pedro? I would not hold out too much hope. Oh my god. Acapulco? I believe so. Oh god. Well, a route from Manila is not going to help us now, is it? If I knew we were going to have to go this way either way, I would have considered going through... Manila. We reached Honolulu in the dark. The captain took a small skiff into the harbor with a few of his officers, wishing to inquire about repairs before putting the water lily into dry dock. Monsieur Fogg watched the boat for a long moment. Now is the time, he said crisply. I trust everything is or in order? Uh, it's, you know, as good as this ever gonna be. I assured him it was, and he nodded. Having expected no other response, let us help so. And with that, my master retreated to his cabin, and I called the signal to arms. What a brave master. Go do something that might get you hung. The water lily erupted in the chaos. Everywhere was the clash of sabers and pistols. Now and then I heard the shriek of the officer's sonic weapons. But I was not alone. The half of the crew that followed the Christian faith fell in behind me with a rallying cry. They fought their Shinto crewmates with vicious determination, clearing the top deck within the hour. The Chinese laborers rewarded my friendship with steadfast loyalty, throwing themselves into the mutiny with all the desperation of men and women who were utterly loath, who utterly loathed sea travel, and longed to revenge themselves upon their instrument of torment in any fashion. They lit fires and tore up the already ragged sails, causing some welcome chaos. The submariners, led by Commander Davis, emerged quietly. There was a long, terrible moment when I wondered at their allegiance. The Commander Davis caught my eye and nodded. We know when it is time for change, she shouted, driving back any stragglers loyal to the captain. I saw Mademoiselle Loretta trip up one of the loyal officers out of the corner of my eye. She tipped her bonnet in my direction. Ooh, a gesture of respect from one player of the game to another. It's a good thing we didn't out her earlier when we saw her cheat. The whirl of battle took me away, but not before I saw her flash. A magnificent feint and block the gangway to the navigation room. By noon, it was clear how the day would end. The mutineers raised a ragged cheer of victory. Hey! I myself had ended up with a debonair scratch upon my cheek, and somehow had come into possession of a brace of pistols and three sabers. I might have killed some people, you never know. By the time the captain and the officers returned, we had complete control of the ship, and they were quickly trussed up and thrown into the brig. For safekeeping, Monsieur Fogg emerged, surveying the scene of recent battle with a calm eye. Well done, he said with classic gentlemanly understatement. Still, it was well done and more, if I do say so myself. So we are on our way to um, San Francisco. Uh, we might have lost too many days on that detour. I don't know. I'm at your service, Monsieur Fogg. Is there something the matter? 
Tell me about San Francisco. What have you learned? San Francisco was a Spanish town not long ago. What about Cheyenne? Uh, you might be interested that there isn't a market to be found in Cheyenne in San, P San Pedro. For instance, one can uh, travel aboard the Salt Lake and San Pedro Railroad from San Pedro to Salt Lake City. Oh. Well, I, there should be a railway in San Francisco. Isn't the uh, Intercontinental Railway done by now? I don't remember what year it was finished, to be honest. To amazement, the successful mutineers held a vote and I elected me the new captain of the Water Lily. I was delighted. Can you imagine, my friends, your humble passport out? Captain of his very own ship, rest assured, mes amis, it was in great part a ceremonial title which made no particular da demands on my seamanship. I'm a captain, Master Fogg. What's your fog, though pleased by the success of our munition, uh, mutinous endeavor, seemed to regard my elevation rank with some wariness. I am, he admitted as we prepared for bed, someone put, somewhat put in mind of Bonaparte. B uh, Bonaparte. Bonaparte? Ha <laughs> ha! Parbleu! I am Napoleon Captain Boner Pants. Oh man, we need to go faster though. Greetings, Reverend. Hey, good day to you. No, what do we need? San Fran to Burlington. We need to talk about New York. If we can at all get that up to New Orleans to New York. Alright, so he's going to talk about... Let's talk about New York to... I don't know where Ponta Delgada is. Uh, I don't know, but listen, the grow is there, I think. Now listen, would you believe it? I introduced my daughter to Cart. You already told me that, indeed, yes. Yes. Let's learn more about the New York routes. New York to Toronto. New York to Washington. Um, Washington to Las Vegas. Hey, what about some English poetry? Most generous. What about Burlington? Are there any routes we haven't learned about yet? None of those really help me. To car? Albuquerque? We're just gonna kind of roll through these. What I need really is Chicago routes. Yeah, uh, because going down to Miami is unlikely to help us. I don't know if we're gonna make it. It's day 60. We're almost broke and we're still not in San Francisco. Uh, the new first mate, a cheerful girl by the name of Wang, ha ha, came to me with an intriguing notion. As you know, the Water Lily is a ship to submarine prototype. She said, if the submariners cooperated, we could convert to a submersible and make the port at San Francisco in two days instead of five. Yes, c call in Commander Davis. We need to cut some days off of this trip. I can see why I'm here, but the answer is no, she declared. I may have aided you against the captain, but I do not trust you or your leadership. May I go? I'll be like, surely you wish to use the submersible, I declared. I do, but who exactly are you to ask me? Forgive me, you're a new captain. I could hardly argue with that. Day 60, Monsieur Fogg murmured that night in his sleep, and still some distance yet to travel. We gotta hope we can get some free train rides when we get to America. Greetings, mademoiselle. Hello, pasta party out. Um, San Fran to Burlington. Chicago. They say the people of Chicago are moving their houses around on steamrollers. But answer me this, and I think I'll marry a Frenchman. I see. You sweetheart, I don't mean you. You're a valet. Shut up, bitch. You're going to marry my dick. Um, let's learn about Chicago to Atlanta. Chicago, Atlanta to New York. They're building an island out of that thing. All right, New York to Washington. We're just going to ask about any routes we can. Here's some playing cards. Where is New York? None of that really helps us. Uh, here's some dominoes, lady. I'm just kind of flying through that. What about Washington? I don't know where Belem is. Monsieur, really? The most efficient way from Belem is through Panama City. None of this is helping me out, girl. We spent most of the day repairing the damage done to the ship by the mutiny. First mate Wang took care of the particulars with an efficiency that I was loath to interfere with. Therefore, I spent my time with Mademoiselle Loretta, who waxed lyrically about the grand adventure of our recent mutiny. 
I feel I have much to learn from you, Captain. That's a good woman's voice, she declared, battling, battling her eyelashes. Ow, ow, punch them. Batting her eyelashes and studied coyness. We're not going to be there till day 67? Oh man, this is not good. I happen upon first mate Wang holding hands with Commander Davis at the rail of the boat. I wondered if I could, uh, I wonder if I could change your mind about the submersible. At the sight of me, both leapt to their feet. Captain, we were just getting to work, Wang said, and the two hurried off in separate directions. I don't care if you love each other, we just gotta get to San Francisco. I'll just, I'll just anxiously brush my master's mustache. Ah, close shave, superb. We were making good time to San Francisco, and it repaired much of the damage to the water lily. I began to feel restless for land. Having only an expanse of blue water ahead and behind, my unlooked for ca Captain C weighing heavily upon my landlubbery soldiers. In the evening, I spoke to Wang about our onward journey, and she told me that you could pick up sugar canes in Acapulco, extremely valuable in Burlington. It's an interesting fact, but I do not think this will help us. We arrived in San Francisco 20 days after leaving Yokohama. That took us 20 days. It was supposed to take 14. Only because of the mutiny, too, we had managed not to lose even a single day, despite our obstacles and a seemingly simple steamy steamer journey had thrown up at my urging. Um, I'm going to give Commander Davis control of the ship, and it promptly sank beneath the waves after we had disembarked. Now she's willing to submerge and go fast. Let us plan. I want to get to Chicago. Um, what about Burlington? Can we alter, negotiate a cheap one? Oh, God, we can't afford anything. What about Salt Lake City? Okay, so we can get a free trip to Salt Lake City at least on the morrow. Uh, I guess we're going to have to stay in a hotel. That is going to cost us money. Well, I almost fat in the night here. San Francisco seemed less a city and more ravenous beast. Hey, trolley. Bent on consumption of everything, even itself. Within the ever expanding city limits, enormous steam power drills and diggers flatten hills. Straighten roads, reform neighborhoods, and dump the resulting rubble into the stone into Missionary Bay. I think this is where we're going to end. I would love to spend, like, days walking around San Fran checking it out. But we have literally 15 days to somehow get across North America, get enough money for a steamship trip to England, and get to London. It is not looking good. The big problem, I think, is money. Because we at least got a free trip to San Francisco. Well, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all next time.